Alright, to start off this video, i like to say thanks to Chris on YouTube. He sent me this inverter. Um, he doesn't have a YouTube channel, but he is on YouTube. Well, he has a, a registered channel, but he doesn't have any videos. And he sent me this inverter after I tried to help him uh, diagnose the problem. Um, we figured out that uh, he accidentally shorted it. Um, via trying to hook it up to your house and what happens is these inverters have a semi live ground so these inverters do not have a neutral or at least not the neutral that uh, everybody's used to so this is a live and that's a live and this ground and is a partial live so this ground from ground to this live is half voltage so around 60 volts this ground to this live is also around 60 volts. Live to live is 120 volts. That is how these inverters work. So if you hook this up to your home, you cannot use the ground on this inverter. You can use the lives, no problem. You can ground your house, no problem. You can ground your solar panels, no problem. You cannot ground, you can't use this ground outlet on this inverter or it will blow up every time so just uh, throwing that out there for you guys just to uh, keep in mind it's a it's a decent quality inverter it's just it, it's just the, the, the way they make them um, where it's not technically for hooking up to your house even even the 8000 watt version of this I'm I haven't tested this yet. Maybe somebody else can test this. I'm pretty sure you can use the hard wire ground, but you can't use this ground. But I would test it first with a multimeter from here to live and live. If you have if you have 60 volts or around 60 volts, do not use it. It will blow your inverter. So, anyways, he sent that to me to fix. I'm going to try and fix this. Um, I've already opened it up and on the input side 75% of the MOSFETs are blown maybe a hundred percent but just from a quick test at minimum 75% and 50% uh, of the output MOSFETs are shot minimum uh, that's what I could check on a quick multimeter test um, I have no idea if any of the input boards are shot so it's going to be a long shot uh, for me to buy it. So I'm going to spend the the fifty to a hundred dollars on buying new MOSFETs for this. Uh, I haven't ordered them yet. I got to look up the part number and then order them. But anyways, thanks a lot, Chris. This will make some good YouTube content. Hope you enjoy the video. And sorry that your inverter went, but I know you got a good deal on your next purchase from this company. So thumbs up, man. So from here, we are testing this 500 watt reliable pure sine wave inverter. This inverter is 12 volts. Reliable Electric actually sent this to me for review. And it's running off of this tiny uh, AGM battery, which is also being charged by this battery. And what I am running off of it right now is my laptop, an Alienware laptop here, and I'm going to be turning that 200 watt heater on. And we're going to see what kind of wattage we get here. So we're at a power factor of 66, pulling 43 watts. And we're going to turn this on. So now that 200 watt heater is on. Let's see if this thing will focus. Okay, we're pulling 300-ish watts. Our voltage on the battery went down to 11.9, and the inverter says 11.4 from the wires. We got losses in the wires and whatnot. That should be nothing for this inverter. So we got to find a way to put something bigger on it. All right, so. I just took all the load off this inverter and we're charging it, we're letting it get up in voltage 
obviously I did drain some power out of the battery but uh, we're getting up there it's climbing quickly once we get up to 14.4 volts I'm gonna turn this heater on and this heater takes a lot of power where's the where's the wattage here it's not on there maybe it's on the bottom here there it is see it is a 750 watt heater this is a 500 watt inverter so obviously it's not gonna like this but let's see what kind of wattage it takes when I turn it on here we go and the inverter overloaded it did run it for a bit but this this can capture it unfortunately so that's overload number one turn it off turn it back on hey still works nothing wrong with it that's good means it's a half decent inverter oops oh I just overloaded it again because I forgot to turn the heater off so that's overload number two so let's uh, turn this inverter this heater off for this time there we go and plug this in I like the plugs on this inverter they contact quite nicely we got the blinking light almost all these reliable inverters do this not all if you specify you need a cert certain volt to work uh, this won't happen but we this is saying only 14.1 but that's that's off we actually have 14.4 volts so the, the the meters off a little bit but it's complaining it's blinking saying you're, hey you're getting too close to over over filling your batteries but let's see if we can catch a inrush current again we're gonna try it yeah, see, it, it, it just, it can't catch it. That's too bad. Okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to check the DC side, and I'm going to get back to you. All right, so this meter is reading one amp running no load, but it's off because, see this battery light? This thing is going dead. It is not working properly anymore. I've been noticing that, so i got to put new batteries in it. But it should get the gist of it. It should catch the the inrush current hopefully and we're going to turn this heater on again and we're going to watch the amps on this meter and here we go wow it didn't catch squat okay I got some new batteries in this thing so this should be a lot more accurate and we are going to ooh. I didn't overload it, but I clicked the button for a second. Let's see how many amps this takes before it kicks out. Wow. Okay, so it, it hit 50 amps. We're going to let the battery come back up. Okay. So we're good. Still on. And we're going to hit this again, and we're going to keep it on until it overloads. Okay, so 50 amps. There are 51 amps that overloaded at. Let's try that again. Let's see. Off, on, cycle. There's the no load current draw. It looks like it's close to amp. I don't know how accurate this meter is right now, but that's what it's saying anyways. We're going to try this heater one more time, see if we can catch the inrush current. It looks like like 52 amps is its peak current draw, which is about what it's rated for, 500 watts. So, you can't really fault it. It, it runs approximately what it's rated, or at least it surges. I don't know if it continues to run. Now. Let's try the same test on this uh, completely no name, but it's 600 watt pure sine wave and see what it can do. Alright, so I have this set up again. 
on this other pure sand wave inverter, which I do like. It's, it served me well. Just can't overload it. And I'm just waiting for the voltage to get back up. We're getting there. And you've got to remember this is rated 600 watts. This is a no name versus this is a Chinese name brand which is looking to be a good like a good inverter company versus a completely no name brand which I've I've tested and I actually don't mind this name brand. Um, gotta be careful with it obviously. There we go. We hit full charge. Now <coughs> let's turn our heater on. 42, 40, oh, it's running it, but what's going on? Oh, our input voltage seems to have fallen too. And it just keeps falling because it cannot run this thing. It's trying to soft start it, so it's dipping in voltage to almost half voltage. We'll try it again so you can see the surge. Here's your surge about, it has almost no surge, and it can't, it cannot do 600 watts. So, it, they claim 600 watts, maybe because it can start some loads as most 600 watt inverters can because of the soft start, but it cannot actually do 600 watts. We'll do it one more time, just to show you guys. There you go. And we're down to 360 watts. So, it's not even close. <coughs> so, from these two inverters, 500 watt sorry reliable and 500 watt no name this one hands down outperforms that one even though this one runs the inverter or runs the heater kind of this one actually runs it properly and if it can't run it it shuts down or this one will give you a brownout condition can wreck some stuff it's kind of good for power tools and whatnot but gotta remember it's overloading non-stop it will burn out eventually if you keep running it like that so quick review thanks for watching guys hope you enjoy the video